happens to adapt and fix your stuff or get rocked. So, again, really excited to see what's going on here as Mr. E leaves. Something's up with that oh, chair. Oh, it's a chair. I don't know if it's cursed or what. Get whatnot. that chair out of here. Give, Mr. E. Give him a, uh, give him a chair. Mr. E also. Oh, he's getting right. a gamer chair. Yeah, yes. last time we saw this happen, they got messed up. So, yeah. East sat down earlier with the sort of original plastic chair. Uh huh. Won game one and said, I hate this chair. Give me the gamer chair. Lost the next three. It was so, a huge change of pace. It's because the, the chair helps with your posture. We're, we're right. about to see a 3 0. <laughs> Cody's favor. <laughs> Cody's favor? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Well, we're on small battlefield first and foremost, I believe. Yes, yeah, small battlefield. Um, There's a little amigo here. <laughs> I'm That's messed up. I'm kind of scared. I love Cody's pressure with float, I, I gotta say. He just psychs. He's, a, he's really good at the mental game, and I love it. I'm here right now. <laughs> no, <laughs> should be taking notes. I, I should be. <laughs> 51? What did I miss? Is that Just Dancing Blade? Yeah, Just Dancing Blade. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. That's like the Mr. E special. I mean, I totally That's get why. It's like low risk, high reward. Yeah. But surprised that Cody, who has, you know, 34 games on record, 34 matches on record, gets hit by that. Yeah. It, what, if you are kind of sleeping, it's really hard. Right. A lot of people in our area have carried it and just punished him for it. Because you can like F smash him because he's like jumping up and we grab him ledge. And if you hit him, like piece of special hit up. But if you like hit him, he dies. Yeah. So it's not as like low reward as it is. They're low risk, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, clipping uh, on the ledge here and Mr. Each is unafraid of I mean you see, you see him jumping down so quickly and being able to have the confidence to fight somebody off stage, especially as Lucina of all characters, and into someone like Peach who has things like float, things like her parasol as well, to get out of these arrow situations. I mean it's it's great for Mr. E at least. Cody needs to find something. Like like now. Like give me a stitch, give me a bomb, something. He, Order if you one. ask, he will because Cody Known for his excellent RNG. Yes, he. I think I think he is the Peach I've seen who has gotten the most bombs and or stitches ever on record. Oh, we're, yeah, you're dead. The, Just, the regular turnips are fine too, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah I'm, I'm sorry, I wasn't aware of the turnip game. But guess what? <laughs> What's that? Oh, AG? that is a stitch right on time. Even better than pulling it earlier too. That's you know using all the regular turnips yeah. and then getting the stitch. Big damage right there. Already 42 just from a little stray hit. Definitely what we were looking for to even up the game, but 158 is rough because now you're looking at up tilt, you're looking at forward tilt, all these things you have to watch out for that are usually just spacing tools, like that forward air, for example, that will take the stock. So now, still working with the deficit, but slowly clawing back from that, I would say, large deficit that we were working with before. Yeah. Okay, pairing the dash attack, and now more percent is tacking off. And Cody needs to watch, like, where he pulls his turn up because if he pulls too close to mystery, he can't get punished. And that's where a lot of pieces like falter. But doing a good job just trying to pull while he has the advantage. But 86%, he has to do at least do something with the turn up. Lots. There we go. I was waiting for really an interaction because it was a lot of just uh, empty hopping, just kind of waiting out each other. Cody's at 86%, so he, ha he has to be a the approacher. And Mr. E knows this, and he's willing to take trades. He's willing to take uh, a more slower position because Cody needs to come to him. And there we go. Cody does. We have the uh, tur uh, the turnip in our hand as well, going for the flow onto the uh, near the center of the stage. It's still going to be Mr. E finding that down at the very end of the day, and also finding the nair uh, after Cody drops shield. Now you're back off stage. What do we do? We go for the, uh, a regular get up, and we get hit by the nair. Is that going to be it? It is. That's kind of the story of most Mr. E games, right? He's a very methodical player. Although he does go for some ambitious options sometimes, he knows that in a situation like that where he has the lead, that he can just kind of take these hits one at a time. Pretty, you know, small hits usually, yeah. but they start adding up. Like that Nair, for example, into the forward air just to set it up again, and then ends up taking the stock with a pretty regular old neutral air, you know, catching that roll in. Uh, usually... You know, neutral air is a hard move to interact with because they can approach with it in that yeah. situation. So you think rolling in is a good idea, but if they decide to neutral air and then just go back down, you get stuck in that situation we saw right there. Yeah, he just neutral air in place and expected a panic option. Panic defensive option from Cody, and he got one. And that gave him the lead. But now we're going to Hollow Bastion, one of Cody's favorite stages. 
Um, what does this offer? To be honest, I actually don't know. I don't <laughs> <have> to stay. <laughs> He just, he just likes it? Yeah, I think it's just a personal touch. He likes it a Good lot. color palette. Yeah. yeah. The um, aesthetics. I believe it does have a lower ceiling dance smash mode. He does. Cody is known to do one of the peach combos with up air that kills off the top. So that might be it. Just the case. But other than that, um, barely even Sage. For <laughs> I mean, I, I definitely believe in like that you just like as a, as a player i mean um it doesn't have to be super super tuned in for your character like if you just like it you like it and is it doing any better on it no <laughs> but to be fair the f well yeah. Not, yeah it's the same thing as, as first game but first game did start off with a very amazing shield break from mr e so here at least cody can play the first stock right, right <laughs> at least a little bit yeah it's basically like two neutral losses right it's like dancing blade into the shield breaker for the stock so a little yeah. bit more back and forth, but Cody kind of having a hard time getting off of the ledge right here. Mr. E playing so wonderfully around the Peach Bombers. Looking to force the issue here, but the jump in is actually pretty good for Cody. The jump in into Fade back mixed up Mr. E just a little bit. Oh, just falling out right there. And Mr. E's doing a fantastic job of just basically keeping his defenses up. Peach, I know, is like known to also be a defensive character, but not great at breaking down other defensive options and try to use the movement to like mix it up. But if you keep getting hit by like a big sword or a sword in general, like Cena's, it will make it virtually impossible to like open someone up. Yeah, and even then you saw Koi try to go for this IB and unfortunately just got completely negated by that Nair and Cody's usual approaches just aren't working. Something has to change. Something has to be adapted into this game too. Again, falling into Mr. E's sword, and now you're off stage once more. You're trying to go for these downers, trying to go for something, but there it is. That's what I'm talking about. Something a little bit different. Going in for the uh, the parasol as a ender, and now suddenly Mr. E's off stage. Are we able to get any sort of uh, are, are we able to get any sort of punish or any sort of approach from that? No. Cody opting to kind of reset it as Mr. E finds himself set right back up on that platform, but not for long. This back air just outrange Lucina forward tilt. Yeah, we don't talk about that <laughs> so. Secret. Okay. Trying to make something happen here. And like a pretty big percent building on Cody's side. But as long as you can hold on to that stock, it doesn't necessarily matter. 166. Unfortunately, going to go down to the forward air. And now it's going to be a bit harder to make something happen. Mr. E just really making this, you know, mountain into a, well, a molehill into a mountain, rather. Yeah. And before you said Mr. E lost the last three now coming here with a game plan great adaptation oh, nice. Ooh, okay I thought that I thought that side would be enough at the very least but no there we go okay, punishing the extremely confident approach of Mr. E and Cody getting us some sort of footing here finally taking first E's first stock as we get four three and a half minutes into this round of uh, this game too um I'm sorry yeah, in this game too. Cody looking not too hot, however. Your whole down hole stock, your 80%. Mr. E's on the on the ledge, just completely negating your options as uh, as your character. What do you do? Beautiful. I love the jump up and using the down air in order to find Mr. E dropping his shield. But Mr. E is able to just find himself back into his original position. Yeah, I'm surprised Mr. E didn't go for the down smash right there, as we usually see. Because he definitely had all the options covered right there. But nonetheless, Still has Cody in the ledge trap situation, and this will be extremely difficult for right? even like a peach like Cody who's able to get zero steps to like get a comeback right there, and the up is gonna take it right there. Yep, just another game of Mr. E getting to that point where the win conditions turn from a few options to pretty much all of the options. Yeah, right? and then you get to a point where Cody, who has been trying to force the issue, been trying to make something happen makes one small misstep and the Dolphin Slash comes out to take that stock because Misery was so good at kind of putting Cody off stage and then not necessarily putting extra pressure off stage, but just waiting a little bit on stage, a little off the ledge to see what Cody would do and then respond accordingly. Whether it was Peach Bomber for all, over the ledge to try and avoid that situation or just maybe float from the regular get up spot. Misery was ready pretty much every time. And I liked the stage pick right here. Um, PS2 allowing for more room and 
if you're Peach, definitely watch this to, to like have like your eye. How do I say that? To manage your like turn up space. Yeah. And basically like have Mr. E kind of hang himself. Before we saw like small battlefield, a bit too too small, but too clustered. Um. Then we saw Hollow, which is a bit wider. It kind of did a bit better, but now this is the widest stage we were playing on. And the best that we see Cody operate on. I feel like you're seeing that come to fruition as well. Finally having the first, you know, lead in this entire series, in this entire set. And it's, it's because we're on such a big stage. You don't really have anywhere. You, you have nowhere to go, but also you have so many places to go for Mr. E, where Cody can kind of trap into these small scenarios and find a lot of value with uh, just punishing approaches from Mr. E. Yeah, one thing though that really helped that dynamic too is Cody came out of the gates with a really big combo, kind of set the tone and get a little bit of a lead. If Mr. E can bring it back, maybe even take the lead back, it could change the dynamic a little bit. It could make all the extra space actually like turn against Cody. You know, Peach can be a slow character. If you have to try and make it from one side of Pokemon Stadium to the other, Mr. E can kind of capitalize on that, but also you're just stuck at the ledge too. Mr. E looking pretty comfortable, but maybe too comfortable with that swing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Got the reset though. You're seeing Mr. E just getting shark out right now. And his defensive options are getting sniped. And 108. Another back row. Trying to go for the turn and it doesn't find Mr. E, but it certainly does that get up. Again, completely negated by Cody. One stop for Mr. E, it's three to Cody, which is really a uh, complete reversal of what happened in game one and into game two as well. Cody at 143%, now you're off stage to Mr. E, and Mr. E understands that if I drop down forward here, you should, in fact, die here. But the makeup, the, the comeback that Mr. E has to make happen right now is extremely difficult, especially with Cody now finding his, uh, his place in the matchup. Yeah. And oh. history starting to gain momentum right now. Tried to go for the footstool right there, but Cody fastballing is to get out of the situation. And Cody Luck. Ooh, hold on though. Mr. E said, uh, you know, maybe uh, Lady Luck can come visit me for just a second. Big damage right there. Not going to take the stock though. Right. Opportunity Good. there for a counter or backer, but doesn't hit it. Ooh, Ooh nice footstool. Oh. Footstool in there. Drew combo. That was a cool footstool scenario. That's a footstool we usually see Web do, where you yeah. get it off the tech roll or a roll in. And Peach is usually not fast enough, but Cody being in the position, just kind of reading the street, what he's going to do, just managed to get that footstool right there. This is so tough, though. Although, you know, it is Cody's game on paper, this is one of those things where the person in the lead kind of starts to worry and maybe has a problem sealing the deal because right now Mr. E evens it right back up to Peach Bomber not getting punished. Yeah, as you said before, this is where Mr. E could get the lead. We are seeing the panics from Cody, like almost every single situation. Mr. E was going for blood right there. Oh, so was Cody, but thankfully he would get the, the, the hit instead and force Mr. E off him for a little bit while longer. Maybe we get a quick little reset and do we get the grab we do into the back throw? Now you're all stage as Lucina. How do we figure this out? We avoid the turn up somehow and we also avoid the net coming from Cody. Allowing Mr. E to get the not one, but two hitter. Allowing Mr. E to finish this strong with a 3-0 against Cody. That definitely makes the story of their head-to-head -head even a little bit more complicated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But Mr. E finally back on the board in the last four sets. Uh, you know, I'm sure Cody's going to go home and tell the family about how it's 3-1 in the last four sets. Yeah. But Mr. E saying, I got the last one. Yeah. Definitely has bragging rights right now. Right, right. But <laughs> don't expect Cody... Though dropping into losers to be out of it just yet. Kid is definitely great and will could make a run to top eight as you can see right now. We also broke the chair curse. Oh, True. We, did. we broke the chair curse. Mr. E said this chair is not it for me and found really like the, the winning chair, I guess. Getting <laughs> a nice 3 0, starting off extremely strong in the very beginning of this uh, set with that shield break and a clean, probably one of the fastest zeros that we've seen, just because, you know, you had no shield. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, two moves, essentially. Yeah, pow, and then slash. That's all it was. <laughs> the poke, pow. It was just very strong, a strong showing 
overall from him, and I, I know someone has said it was me, Cody, 3 0, Mr. E, but. Yeah, someone did. Someone, I don't know who. But interesting. Might have been you. Right? <laughs> 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 we got a pretty crazy match coming up to the stream set, if I'm not mistaken. We got PK Chris okay, catch going up, up against Jackal. Not catch up either. Okay. As we get ready for winner's quarters finals here.